I don't want to get into the recipe for the best bone ash mixes. And I say bone ash mixes because the bone ash mixes are absolutely the best sculpture clay components. Like, what you want to do, if you want to make a sculpture clay, you get any clay, but instead of doing the raku style with the rock and the sand, you mix it with bone ash. Because bone ash really strengthens the clay and makes it so even small amounts of clay can hold a lot of weight. But see, in my formula for, you know, making sculpture clay, I have about four different components that I add. You know, I get some raku clay with sand. I let it get covered by that. And maybe a couple other sculpture clays with a different gradation of sand or a different gradation of grog. With then I add my own grog, and I get my own grog with different gradations and high quantities, and from failed pieces too. And then I use crushed clay that is basically dry bone dry. So when you add all those components, they help dry up the clay so you can build a sculpture. And you got to remember your load bearing capacity and your medium that you're using because when you're building a sculpture, any type of item you have to make sure that the weight is equally dispersed or else it's going to start to snag if everything is not stuck together. And you'll start to learn a little more about gravity when you're making a piece because if you do it just right, gravity can make your pieces stronger and help things go down and fuse. And if you get it wrong, the gravity can tear something up and just destroy a perfect, a beautiful piece that you would have maybe gotten into a museum. So you got to remember that. So when it comes to sculpture clays, the bone ash has this way of having these jagged, absolutely valuable reinforcements. It's like perpendicular throughout the clay. And when you mix it in with your clay and really blend it in, it makes a very solid medium. It just needs to be a little slip together and it can hold like a rock. And bone ash is one of those magic components that I personally stumbled across and did some research and I did use bone ash in my formula. And I'll also use failed piece clay, whereas it's something that I'm not going to fire, but I'm going to take the clay and I'm going to crush it up into a flower. And I'm going to mix the clay flour in there. And that way it all dries it out fast and helps it take compression. So that's something that is a popular recipe with a lot of people because bone ash and grog and sand and especially the clay powder are all good things. But then in my formula, sometimes I will get different bags of kaolin or different bags of different clay components like rock clays. And I'll mix a few different rock clays together with it because the rock clays can have that strength. But you've got to be careful with your rock clays because they can also have high levels of sulfur and other things. So when it comes to rock clays, I might use a red art or a red staining clay. So that way with a sculpture, I can glaze it beautifully because red glaze is better. So you add some of the red art or dried red clay in there and the iron oxides in there will help it react well with glazes and get good colors. So you got to remember to trade off with everything. And sometimes I want to just make something and have the structure bear, so I got to have geometric stuff holding together. So it really becomes a dilemma because time can be on your side or against you, depending on how you get your clay to dry and fuse. Because getting every clay right to the job is crucial. And you might want to add some dry clay and some grog and some bone ash and any other additives that you can think of to kind of dry it out at times. And personally, the bone ash is one of those things I swear by because I've been able to build some really interesting pieces with it and sculptures that are just like out of this world. So bone ash is definitely one of those components that you might want to consider. So I hope this video helps in making sculpture clay.